It's every driver's worst nightmare. You're driving along, minding your own business, and a car pulls out in front of you. You're going 60, and the other car is getting closer by the second. With no choice, you try to relax and prepare for the impact. The truth is, even if you're the safest driver in the world, you just can't trust that reckless strangers won't put you in serious danger. But what if this was no longer a problem? I'm not referring to self-driving cars. What if we could change the anatomy of human beings to survive serious road accidents and walk away with barely a scratch? Amazing. The first thing we need to understand is why are car crashes such a huge problem for society? According to the World Health Organization, road traffic injuries are the eighth leading cause of death globally. On average, 1.25 million people die every year in road accidents. To put that into perspective, that's more than double the entire population of Atlanta, Georgia. With most car accidents occurring within three miles of home, it's no wonder the World Health Organization views car crashes as an issue of utmost importance. But how can such an enormous issue be fixed when billions of people rely on their cars to get to work every day? It all starts with the statistics. In a study led by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the US, it was found that the number of men who died every year in car accidents was more than double the number of women. On top of this, the most common demographic in the car crash fatalities was elderly men aged 85 and above. Young male drivers are the second most common fatality group, and this is nothing new. Ever since cars became available on higher purchase in the early 20th century, racing around in a souped up automobile has been a defining feature of the angsty young man with an attitude problem. A cultural development that's led to countless deaths. Another serious trend, which is, again, nothing new, is the link between drunk driving and fatalities. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration study found 22,015 of the crash deaths occurring in the US in 2015 involved alcohol. The worst part is alcohol relaxes the muscles, making the drunk driver less likely to sustain injuries than the unfortunate victim they crash into. But more than any other factor and more recent is the distraction caused by mobile phones. Now it's been understood for a long time that distractions are the key cause of car accidents. But did you know that cell phones are the cause of 1.6 million crashes a year? The intoxicating urge to tweet about the idiot who just cut you off is part of the problem that causes 500,000 injuries and takes 6,000 lives every year. Do yourself a favor and don't pick up your phone while driving. Candy Crush can wait. But what makes car accidents so deadly? The answer is pretty simple. Cars hard, humans soft. The truth is our bodies are genetically optimized so that we can walk, run, and jump, changing from our fastest sprint to a total stop easily and without injury. We're best at this when we're at peak fitness with frequent exercise, which is why those of us who spend most of our days seated have a tendency to develop back problems. Our bodies aren't built for that. Similarly, they haven't evolved to be able to withstand the sudden deceleration of being slammed into a solid surface at 70 miles an hour. This is why we get seriously injured in road accidents, and different types of crashes can injure us differently. According to the Monash University's Accident Research Center, head-on collisions do the most damage to the chest and lower limbs as the body is thrown forward against the dashboard, and the skull, and thus the brain, can smash against the windscreen if a seatbelt isn't worn. This is a gruesome, guaranteed recipe for brain soup. Being rear-ended can jolt your neck in a nasty way, possibly breaking it, and at the very least leave you with some nasty whiplash. Researchers suggest side-on collisions are the most dangerous, as the only thing between the other vehicle and your soft, fleshy body is the car door. In these crashes, your head, legs, and abdomen, meaning your insides too, are most vulnerable. Finally, rolling a car, usually after hitting a static object or veering off the road, can injure your arms, chest, and head as you're thrown around with enough force to turn you into a human smoothie. It's all pretty gruesome, but how can we protect ourselves when our bodies are so poorly designed to withstand that kind of force? We could change our bodies. Here's how. Let's start from the outside. Our skin is pretty thin and doesn't fare too well when we're launched through the windshield of a car. Despite what Grand Theft Auto would have you believe, scraping along asphalt at top speed isn't something you can walk off. The first thing we'd need to do is thicken our skin to reduce road rash as well as the chance of nasty lacerations from broken glass and metal. Next, we'd need to protect our lungs and heart by increasing the size of our rib cage substantially. 
and padding out our chest with a few extra nipples. The breast tissue will offer some support if we're forced into the steering wheel. We can protect our spinal column by adding some extra bones around the neck, which acts like a brace and offers support to reduce the effects of whiplash. Next, we need to flatten the face substantially to reduce damage to the eyes, ears, and sinuses, extending the facial bones around these areas. Finally, the brain. We can protect this by thickening the skull and allowing it to fracture on impact, working much the same as a helmet by absorbing the impact. This will prevent the brain from being shaken around too much, and we can enhance this by increasing the amounts of ligaments and fluid inside the skull, making it harder for the brain to slam into the skull walls during rapid deceleration. You may be thinking, good God, this abomination would look hideous. And yeah, you'd be right. I know because it already exists. Thanks to an incredible project that brought together the talents and knowledge of sculptor Patricia Piccini, trauma surgeon Christian Kinfeld, and traffic accident expert David Logan, we now have an anatomically correct visual representation of what the ultimate car crash survivor might look like. His name is Graham. <laughs> yeah, Graham. And he's got it all. Extra nipples, thick neck, flat face. Every aspect of Graham has been meticulously crafted to make him more likely to survive a crash, which really forces you to realize how poorly adapted you are to surviving one. This is precisely the point. Crafted from silicon, resin, fiberglass, and real human hair, Graham has been displayed in several Australian museums in an effort to raise awareness of the importance of safe driving. But you know what? I think it could be made even better. Vehicle manufacturers have been known to adapt their injury prevention designs differently based on region. The reason for this is that in an area like rural America, where there's a lot of open, empty road between towns, there's a higher chance that drivers will be injured from rolling their car by falling asleep at the wheel on the long journey, for example. In Europe, towns tend to be closer together, making collisions between more than one driver the most likely cause of crashes. So manufacturers design the cars they sell in these areas differently with different safety measures to best deal with these kinds of crashes. For example, pedestrian safety regulations in Europe meant that some versions of European Mustangs don't get hood vents, while US versions do. Apparently, this affects how the car crumples and the vents can be sharp if a collision occurs, so the edges of the bonnet need to be collapsible in Europe. So why not apply these types of measures to our adapted humans? For ultimate safety, adapted appropriately, we could have an American Gram for long, empty roads and rollover crashes, and a European Gram for shorter, busier journeys with a tendency for head-on collisions. The American Gram facing the risk of rolling needs to be prepared for the main injuries sustained from such a crash. Severe injuries to the upper extremities and chest. We'll double up on Graham's padded rib cage and nipple airbags. As for the upper extremities, we'll increase Graham's bone density and shorten his arms, while also shortening his fingers and molding them to the curve of the wheel to maximize grip and minimize any broken bones. American Graham is beginning to resemble a T-Rex crossed with a cow. He may be nightmare fuel, but at least he's safe. As for European Graham, those head-on collisions can be devastating, so we'll need to protect his chest and lower limbs. We'll steal the udder design from American Graham while thickening and elasticizing his rib cage a little more. As for his legs, the trauma is going to come from his knees smashing into the steering column on impact, so we'll give Graham an additional joint, splitting his femur bones so that his legs become flexible and won't be so easily crushed or broken by the impact. This sleek European Graham model may be somewhat chicken-like if someone left a chicken in a nuclear waste dump for a thousand years, but he's still a ladies' man at heart. By specifically adapting each version of Graham to their immediate environment, considering the likelihood of each type of collision, we can lower the damage to a minimum. But the best way to reduce the damage from accidents is to prevent them from happening at all. Lack of focus, which can be caused by tiredness, distractions, old age, and drunkenness, is the biggest killer in traffic accidents. So Graham would need near perfect concentration and reaction time to make him as safe as possible. Since we're already in some pretty weird and experimental territory, I suppose we could move into the realm of psychology. Starting small, recent studies have demonstrated that chewing gum can increase a person's duration of focus. So we'll keep Graham's glove compartment loaded with hubba bubba. Other studies have shown that as focus requires willpower, regular breaks to watch entertaining or funny videos can help replenish willpower and increase its reserves. So we'll make sure Graham pulls over every hour and streams some of our best videos. A significant way we can prevent Graham getting into danger or causing it for others is to make sure he never drinks and drives. So using a little classical conditioning and maybe some genetic modification if we're feeling particularly adventurous, we can give Graham dipsophobia 
the chronic fear of alcohol. On top of this, our version of Graham's stubby little fingers will make texting while driving near impossible, so that major issue is off the cards. Could this bizarre modified human being ever be real? Amazing recent advances in genetics and biotechnics suggest it might actually be possible. Using fascinating new scientific breakthroughs like CRISPR-Cas9 or clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats associated protein number nine, if you're hungry for word salad. Scientists have been able to identify and alter genetic code to create hornless cattle and other oddities. The ethics are still under serious discussion, but the technology to modify genes is there already, so a stronger human body could be viable in the very distant future, although unforeseen side effects and cancers could be problematic. Biochemical enhancements could be another route to the same destination, using robotics and cutting-edge technology. Already available technology like retinal implants could be modified with a heads-up display and combined with the software from self-driving cars to show drivers how fast other cars are going, how far away they are, and analyze any potential dangers. Robotic exoskeletons could be worn to reduce the impact from crashes by absorbing or reducing some of the force or by taking control of the vehicle in case of an emergency. In the not-so-distant future, we may even load our brains with digital enhancements, substantially improving our reaction times and decision making abilities. With the ongoing development of self-driving cars by companies like Tesla, the most dangerous factor in driving, which is us, could soon be taken out of the equation. Eventually, all cars may be controlled by a flawless wireless network of communication, which could put an end to car crashes forever. Does this seem like an ideal future to you? Or do you hate the idea of AI taking the fun out of driving? Do you have better suggestions on how we can deal with the problem of car accidents? Or better yet, do you have a crush on Graham? Let me know in the comments section down below. And thanks for watching.